Are you thinking of making a move to Calgary, but you're not quite sure where in the city you'd like to move to yet? There are four quadrants in the city and they're all fairly unique, but you're in luck because in this multi-part video series, I'm going to be breaking down the entire city into its different geographic regions. So you're not going to want to miss this one. My name is Ryan Gillard. I'm a local realtor here in Calgary with Real Broker. And this video is specifically about where to live in Southeast Calgary, an area I'm very familiar with, having grown up in the Southeast and selling real estate here the past 10 years. So I'll be taking you out into the streets. I'll be showing you some photos and videos and breaking down each individual neighborhood and letting you know all the pros and cons of those areas. So let's get into it. And before we do that, actually, this is part three of, a, of the multi-part video series. You can find part one, where to live in the inner city by clicking this link right here. And part two is where to live on the west side, which you can find right here. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about living in Southeast Calgary. And so I've got the CREB, so the Calgary Real Estate Board's community map. And for this video, we're using everything in the yellow here. So this is what they're designating as the Southeast portion of the city. Now, not to be confused with the mailing address of Southeast Calgary, which will also include all of these guys right here. So this is McLeod Trail right here. And everything on the east side of McLeod Trail is classified as Southeast Calgary from a mailing address perspective. But the Calgary Real Estate Board has called this South Calgary and this Southeast Calgary, just to confuse people. But in this video, we're just going to cover the, the areas in yellow. And all this stuff will be a future video. And to show you on the map, actually, the Google Maps look a little easier. So for mailing address Southeast Calgary will be everything on the far east of downtown. And then that's, sorry, this keeps popping up. And then to Memorial Drive, this is the boundaries. Uh, yeah, Memorial Drive to McLeod Trail. And everything in this chunk right here will be classified as Southeast Calgary. But again, for, for this video, we're just using the stuff in yellow. Okay, so now let's talk about the defining features of Southeast Calgary. So let's start with the roads first. It is a bit of a trek from downtown. To get from the core right here to the far outskirts, like in Auburn Bay, Mahogany, it might be a 20 minute ride, you know, depending if there's traffic or not. Um, I think South Calgary has the worst traffic in all of Calgary. There's always some kind of accident on Deerfoot uh, slowing things down. Um, so we've got Deerfoot Trail. This is, this is the fastest freeway in the city, providing there's no traffic or accidents. And this will take you out to the, to the United States if you keep following it. And if you go north all the way on Deerfoot Trail, it'll take you all the way into Edmonton. So it's a, it's a good north-south uh, freeway. That's one of the major roads in this region. You have the Ring Road. Stony Trail is this road you see right here. And you can take this pretty fast. You can go 100 kilometers an hour. You can go 110 on the Deerfoot, and you can go about 100 on the 201 the Stony Trail, you see here. And this one will take you all the way around the city. And for other major roads in the southeast, we've got Glenmore Trail, which is kind of the dividing line. Um, so we got Glenmore is fast, is a major road east-west throughout the city, which you can see right here, so Glenmore Trail. All the areas in yellow that we're covering are south of Glenmore Trail. This is Glenmore right here, if you're curious. And the one neighborhood that's kind of the odd, the odd duck here is Ogden. I think they should probably, I don't know why they include it in southeast. It should just be in East Calgary along with these green ones. But we'll cover it because it is in the yellow section. So we've got Glenmore, we've got Deerfoot, we've got Stony Trail. And we have the last one here, while not technically in southeast Calgary, we have McLeod Trail, another busy road. Um, they'll take you right down into the city center. And the other defining feature of the south is the Bow River. So if we zoom this out here, so the, the river starts somewhere in the mountains over here. It flows kind of in this direction through the northwest into downtown. And it'll sneak its way all the way south out of the city. And everything along the river, there's, there's paths all the way along the river. So in the south, you've got excellent access to all the activities. There's all parks and stuff that you can do along the river. You could actually run. There's like a jogging path all the way here, all the way to like the mountains. Like the, Calgary is just one giant connected park. So it's a good spot for outdoor lovers. And we also have Fish Creek Park 
which is this massive green section right here. So the south has easy access to the river and a lot of parks. And some of the other defining features of the south that make it a bit unique is you can see here, if I zoom in, these are all man-made water features in the south. Um, Calgary and Alberta is not known for having a lot of water. Obviously, we're landlocked, and there's not many lakes, natural lakes, in Alberta, especially in the south where Calgary is. So we had to improvise, and we have a lot of man-made lakes, but most of these are, are actually in south Calgary. So if I zoom out, there's only one man-made lake in northwest Calgary, and that's an arbor lake. And I don't think it's quite as nice as some of the lakes in the south, like Mahogany. And there's only one in the northeast. Um, in Coral Springs, which you can see right over here. And so if we look in here, so some of these areas that have lakes are, so we've got Chaparral, Sundance, Midnapore, Lake Bonavista has two of them. Uh, these are some of the older areas that have lakes. This section of the, of the southeast is all fairly new. And you see there's some there's water features in Cranston. There's a part of the neighborhood is actually backing onto the river. We've got Auburn Bay, we've got a huge lake in Mahogany, very nice spot. And there are some in New Brighton and Copperfield, there's different kind of canals and stuff like that. Uh, same thing with Mackenzie Town, and one of the older lake communities in the south is Mackenzie Lake, which you can see right here. So it has, the south has more lakes than any other part of Calgary. So for those who are curious, where does the south rank in terms of affordability, is that the most expensive parts of Calgary are the inner, inner city, and the west side. So this region right here is the most expensive part of Calgary. Then it would go northwest, and then you could lump in the south all as one general area. So it's about mid-range. It's not super crazy expensive, but it's not cheap. Um, it's just a very, very typical part of Calgary. Like you could meet like a couple and the husband could be a mechanic and the wife could be a teacher and they have two kids and they live in the south. They just, it's very, a very kind of standard type area. And then after, in terms, of, in terms of affordability, then it would go like north central and then the east side of Calgary would be the most affordable. So the, the south part is just very average, I would say, in, in a good way. So one other thing that I like about uh, the south is there's lots of new builds. So again, if you're unfamiliar with Calgary, we can expand the city like forever in this direction. There's nothing stopping it from, from doubling its size in this direction. We can't go too much further in this direction. We've got the First Nations Reserve right here, and this part of the area is all high-end country estate like acreages. So although it doesn't look like it's part of the city, if you zoom in, these are all neighborhoods that are, that are essentially part of the city, and I can't see us expanding too much into this area without a lot of pushback. So the only ways that we can go, we can go towards Airdrie and we can go towards Okotoks and, and East. So you, as a buyer, there's going to be tons of new builds in this area at decent price points. So it can be a, a very desirable part of the city for that reason. Another thing that I like about South Calgary is a lot of these communities are master planned. Like they're, they're basically, like they were fields before and now they're, they're designed with intent and everything has its, it's, it belongs in its place kind of. It's, Hard to describe unless you've been down there, but everything is organized, everything is there for a reason, and it's just a very efficient and organized process for all these new communities. And the next point which I like about South Calgary is there are lots of construction projects uh, on the horizon. Uh, we've got the Green Line LRT. So at the moment, the LRT, um, it I think it goes to, to Shaughnessy is the last stop, and it runs kind of, kind of close to McLeod Trail, just straight north. And then there's a, a line connecting west, there's a line connecting to the northwest, and there's one to the northeast. We are building the green line, which will kind of run kind of like this. Uh, I'll, I'll pull up the map so you can see a little better, but it'll, it'll come from the deep south into the downtown and then run up north central. And I believe it's approved, but they, we keep debating, you know, changing some of the features of it. But it will be happening at some point, which will be a great benefit to living in South Calgary. And now I'll touch on some of the negative things that I like about, some of the negative things that I don't like about South Calgary. It can be very industrial in parts. So you can't really see it, but uh, actually the Kreb map. So all this stuff, so Shepherd Industrial, South Foothills, East Shepherd Industrial, uh, even some of the stuff over here, Starfield, Great Plains, Foothills, this is all like industrial, like warehouses, railroad lines. 
Um, so this huge section right here is all industrial. So it can be a bit industrial, but it can be good and bad. Like there's obviously lots of people that work in these areas. And if you're living in South Calgary, it's an easy commute. Um, it can be a bit of a sprawl, like to get from Seaton all the way to downtown. I personally would not want to do that commute every day. Um, so it can be a bit sprawled out, which I think it's going to continue to, to go in that direction. There's already new builds um, south of Mahogany and this Hotchkiss area. So over time, this whole region, I think, will be, will be part of Calgary. So just a bit sprawled out. Um, I personally hate Deerfoot Trail. Um, if there's no traffic, it's, it's totally fine, but it's unpredictable and there's always some kind of accident. Deerfoot Trail was actually designed when the city was like 500,000 people. Maybe it's closer to 1.5 or 1.6 million now. So it needs to be expanded and I just find it's a real pain if you're commuting on the Deerfoot every single day, uh, which you'll have to do if you're living in Southeast Calgary. And the other thing about the Southeast that I'm not really that fond of is it's kind of, it's kind of flat and featureless. So again, for those who are unfamiliar, Calgary is at the crossroads where half the city on the east side is prairie-like, pretty flat and featureless. And the part of the city on the west side is like rolling hills and foothills and it's close to the mountains. It's not nearly as scenic as parts of the west side over here and northwest Calgary. It's primarily just flat, and there are some ridges overlooking the river which have nice views, but overall the city is kind of flat and featureless in this area. And the last thing that I'll mention here that I don't like about Southeast Calgary is it's all fairly new. Like these areas right here, like New Brighton, they're all within the last 10 to 20 years. The 20 years for these areas, Mackenzie Lake, Mackenzie Town, and everything in this section is all like within the last 10 years, I think. Everything has like a similar look to it. They're all two stories, the same layout. You walk in, there's a half bath on the main level. There's three bedrooms upstairs with a full bath. Maybe there's an ensuite, and maybe half the homes have an unfinished basement, half are finished, but they're all identical. They all have the front garage. They're not nearly as unique as, as some of the homes in the inner city, but that's just the way the construction is going these days. And um, that's about it as a, as a general rundown of the southeast part of the city. So now I'll get into the actual neighborhoods. And there's actually two that I won't touch on here. I won't touch on Hotchkiss and this one called Range View. These are like early stages of construction. There's nothing, that, not much there at the moment. Uh, just primarily new builds and it was just fields before. So not much to talk about for these two yet. And I'll start here in Cranston and I'll, make, I'll work my way back up to, uh, to Ogden last. All right, first up, let's talk about the area of Cranston, this section right over here. So on the Google Maps, Cranston is a massive area. It's everything in between these two freeways. So the, the Ring Road 201 and Deerfoot Trail right here, this whole section is classified as Cranston. And it, there's lots of different micro pockets in this area. This part of Cranston is the older part that was first developed, like say early 2000s until now. And the Riverstone area, if you follow this road, Cranston Avenue, it'll take you down close to the river. And this area is still under construction. There are some brand new homes. This is a very pricey part of Cranston. Uh, one of the most pricey parts of the city, I would say. It's a very expensive area. Um, I'll show you, where's my satellite view? Yeah, so if you take Cranston Avenue into Riverstone, is this section right here. Beautiful area, really high-end homes. You'll see homes in here from like 1.5 to 2.5 million. And there's other options as well. I've seen some condos and townhouses in this region, but it can be very pricey. Um, the one thing I don't like about Riverstone is that it is almost on the river. Uh, it, I'm sure the engineers and developers got it right, but it would scare me a little bit being that close to the river. It looks like a floodplain to me. So do your due diligence. I, I could be wrong, but uh, just... From my eyeball test, it seems like it's pretty close to the river and it could flood at some point. But again, do your own due diligence here. Um, other things to note about Cranston is this is very pricey down here, obviously. I just mentioned that. And all the homes that are kind of backing on to this ridge here have fantastic views of the river valley and they can also get into like the millions, multi millions um, in value. And as you can see in the video in the background, they do have sweeping views of the river valley. And then everything else, um, it's, it is a master plan community. So you see price ranges, you see all sorts of different um, price ranges like all over the map. You see 
lots of different product types. So if I actually pull up the stats here, where is it here? So the average price in the area is 683000 for a detached home, a duplex, 481000 apartments, 312000 That's like your classic condo style. And for townhouses, 400000 And again, there are pockets that you could drop like $2 million in a home. So it, it is like a master plan community that has a variety of different products. Um, there are, I think there's three schools in Cranston. So it is a very developed area. And the, the older parts of Cranston... I would say they might be losing out to areas like Auburn Bay and Mahogany as they're newer and have the lakes. Uh, so they might have some competition, but for the most part, I would say Cranston is almost built out, uh, except for a few pockets in the Riverstone area. Um, a bit of a trek to downtown, like I mentioned earlier, from Cranston to downtown, maybe 20 minutes, depending on, on the traffic. And other than that, there's not much to talk about in terms of Cranston. Let's talk about Seaton next, which is this area right here. And on the Google map, this section right here is Seaton. Not nearly as big as Cranston. It looks fairly small right here, but I believe this whole section is still under construction. So a new area, lots of this is still being developed. And Seaton is well known for being the location of the South Health Campus, this big hospital that you see right over here. I recall when they first started building this, I thought, why are they making this in the middle of nowhere at the time? But this whole area has been built up since, and this hospital serves this entire um, south region. And um, kind of a unique area, not nearly as pricey as, say, Auburn Bay and Mahogany, which I'll cover next. Um, it used to be just townhouses, from what I can recall, around the hospital. But now it's, uh, it's expanded, and there's some pockets of detached homes down here. There's different condo and townhouse developments throughout the area. Um, not not a bad price point compared to the surrounding areas. So I'll show the stats here. Where are we? So for a detached home, the average price six hundred ninety-two thousand. Semi-detached, duplex five hundred twenty-seven thousand. Loads of row houses, townhouses. This whole area is littered with townhouses. They're all over the place. Um, three hundred seventy-nine thousand eight hundred and apartments three hundred twenty-five thousand. And uh, I'll go back to the satellite map here. So you can see all the construction here. I didn't visit this area for a couple years and I was shocked when I came back here. There's so much that's been developed since then. Like there's a YMCA here, one of the biggest in North America, I believe. Uh, there's a library, there is a high school and tons of stores in this section over here. And uh, along with the hospital, and I believe the Green Line LRT will be around here somewhere as well. So there's lots of infrastructure here, and uh, all these stores, they, they help serve this entire region. And there's just a lot of stuff going on in the Seton area. And again, I thought it was mostly just going to be like the hospital and some stores, but now there are other pockets of detached homes, and there's just uh, all sorts of developments throughout this area. And it has become pretty cool, I would say. Next up is the area of Auburn Bay, one of the most popular communities in all of Calgary. Very desirable area. So I'll show you on the map here. So it's just to the east of Cranston. So south of the Ring Road and then west of 52nd Street. And just north of Seton, you have the area of Auburn Bay, one of the lake communities in Calgary. And I'll show you that on the satellite here. Where are we? So here's Auburn Bay Lake. And so this lake is actually private. You can't, this is where you access the lake in this area over here. There's a beach. To actually get into this area, you have to be a part of the of the neighborhood, so it's not for the public. And a uh, very popular area, and again, it's one of those master plan communities where you'll find everything. So I'll pull up the Google Maps here, and so there are pockets of really high-end homes around the lake. This is like the estates area close to the lake, and there are some homes in here that can range up to like two and a half million. And then stuff on the outside of the lake is the more more typical homes in the area. And the stats for Auburn Bay are, uh, where are we here, so monthly. So Auburn Bay, the average price, 744000 So it's more expensive than both Cranston and Seton. For a duplex, 483000 Again, apartments throughout Calgary are all kind of similar price range, 318000 for a condo. And townhouses are 401000 Again, this is a bit deceiving, 744000 That might be the typical... Um, Typical range like in the outskirts of the lake, but in this interior area, you can, you'll see homes from one to 
to almost three million. And it's also good because you've got all the shopping in the Seton area. You've got the hospital. You've also got shopping on 52nd Street in this yellow section right here. And also not far away from Auburn Bay is 130th Avenue. And this giant yellow section is all shopping. Actually, sorry, th these are all car dealerships over here. This section over here is all shopping as well. So lots of shopping close in close proximity. And there are three schools in the Auburn Bay. And it's also a bit newer than Cranston. I'd say Auburn Bay, the bulk of it's like 2010 until the present. Uh, I think at this time it is built out. Um, all the new stuff you'll see like in Seton and the Mahogany area. And that's all I can really say about Auburn Bay. One of the more popular areas. I'd put a star beside this one uh, if you are thinking of moving into the southeast. Let's talk about Mahogany next. That's this area right here. Again, this is probably the most popular area of the southeast, I would say. And Mahogany, so let's zoom out of it here. So we touched on Cranston, Auburn Bay, Seton. So our, Auburn, uh, sorry, Mahogany is just right over here. Similar idea to Auburn Bay, except that it's a bit newer. And the lake is a little better, I would say. Um, as you can see from the video in the background, uh, when I was there the other day, it looked like I was in a different city. It didn't even feel like Calgary. It looked like I was somewhere tropical. So it has a fantastic lake. And uh, it's maybe a bit more master plan than Auburn Bay. It's hard to describe, but it just feels like it's a bit more more stuff going on. So we have um, what's called Westman Village is this built up area kind of in the middle right here where it's a combination. There's the Chairman Steakhouse, a very popular restaurant. You got all these different shops and restaurants and uh, attached to condo buildings. And then you have like the promenade um, Kind of overlooking the water as you can see in the video in the background it does look like i'm in a different city um, so it's a very desirable area and it can be very pricey as well even some of these condos in the west bend village area have gone for like two and a half to three million dollars so it's definitely pricier compared to the other areas we've talked about there are detached sales uh, throughout mahogany especially the ones backing onto these lakes or in some of these islands that could get up to three million dollars as well so a very pricey part of calgary and I'll just pull up the stats here. Um, where are we? Stats. So again, detached price, 742000 is the average. Again, that's for like the more typical parts of Mahogany that aren't necessarily backing onto the, the lakes and stuff like that. Um, duplexes, 496000 is the average. Again, the condos, 300000 But again, I've seen homes, uh, condos that have gone for 2.5 to $3 million in this area. And townhouse is about 438,000. And there are also a couple of schools in Mahogany. And the last thing I'll mention is that I think they started building Mahogany around like 2010-ish. And there's, there's still parts that are under construction. So it's one of the newer parts of the Southeast. And again, I'd put a star beside this neighborhood as probably one of the more popular ones in all of South Calgary, not just the Southeast, but the Southwest as well. Moving along just north of Mahogany across the Ring Road, we come to the area of Copperfield, this section right over here. So on the Google map, you can see it right here, Copperfield. Um, a good area, it's got good proximity to both 52nd Street, uh, actually 52nd Street, the Ring Road, uh, to Sony Trail. And it's also got pr good proximity to the 130th Avenue Shopping Center. Um, so good access routes in and out. Um, definitely more affordable than Mahogany and, and Auburn Bay. Of the ones that we've covered so far, I would say Copperfield is the most affordable. I can recall about 10 years ago, some of my friends were moving into these areas of New Brighton and Copperfield. It, good areas for like young families who are just starting out. Um, good price points. So I'll show you the stats here. So Copperfield, uh, detached homes, 564000 is the average. Um, no semi-detached homes in, uh, in Copperfield as far as I know. And there's the odd uh, apartment style building in here. And there's lots of townhouses as well, uh, 383900 So a good price point for townhouses and again condos for about three hundred k. Um, so good kind of an entry level starting point um, in Copperfield. There are some water features, uh, not as many as in, in Mahogany. If you're curious, where I was filming my opening scene was actually right here in the Copper Pond, right over here. So there are some kind of luxury homes backing onto the ponds. I think the highest that I've seen lately was a home that went for like seven fifty. But that's pretty rare. Most of these homes are like in the average price ranges, like like five hundreds to six hundreds. 
Um, I believe there are two schools in Copperfield. And other than that, there's not too much to say. It's just a good, safe neighborhood, a uh, good price point. And a lot of young families move into here. So again, very typical of the Southeast. Not crazy expensive, but not, not cheap. And um, just very, very average in a good way. Okay, moving along from Copperfield, we come to the area of New Brighton. And uh, very similar to Copperfield. There's not too much different to touch on. I'll pull up the satellite view here. So this is Copperfield over here, and just across the street is from McIver Boulevard is New Brighton. Um, similar price point, similar idea. It's just, I think the architecture looks slightly different in New Brighton. It's supposed to take on an English look. Um, in terms of pricing, very similar. A detached home in New Brighton is about $596,000. Um, Semi-detached, $515,000. And there's a lot of everything in New Brighton. There are complexes for apartments, townhouses. Uh, so townhouse about 390,000. Again, condos about 300k. And I would say if you were to pick one of the two, uh, I've talked to some friends who do live in the area, and they they were leaning towards New Brighton, but they are, they are very similar. And the idea is kind of the same, where it's younger, you know, starting out type families, um, just based on the good price range. And there are a few schools in New Brighton as well. But other than that, there's just there's not too much to say that's different from Copperfield. Moving east of New Brighton, we come to the area of Mackenzie Town, this section right here. One of the most popular areas of the southeast, one of my favorites. And I'll show you the boundaries here. So 52nd Street is, is the dividing line between um, Copperfield, New Brighton, and Mackenzie Town is this section right over here. And it's a very unique area where it was designed to look like a town and to have a town square. So it's got a very unique look. And to understand Mackenzie Town, you have to break it down into four different areas. So the first area is called Prestwick. That's this northern section right here. Um, this is the more affordable part of, um, of Mackenzie Town. And there are some other spots throughout here that are also affordable, but this, this part is more affordable than uh, the stuff around the lake here. And as we get to the northern part of Prestwick, you'll see a lot of condo developments over here and over here, kind of close to the, all the shopping center, close to the shopping center area on 130th Avenue. And then all of this is kind of, they're kind of like old fashioned looking detached over there. I really like it. They got these cool little verandas out front. Um, just reminds me of a small town atmosphere. So that's Prestwick, and then when we get to Inverness, this section over here, very cool area. As you can see the video in the background, it looks like a like an American town with all the brick townhouses. Uh, just a very old-fashioned look to it. Um, there's a bit of a town square here with all these townhouses around it. Uh, very interesting area. Uh, that's the Inverness area, and the third area is called High Street. That's the shopping district. So all this yellow section that you see over here is all a bunch of shopping, like grocery stores, and there's a few bars and stuff like that. So it's it's designed to have like a town atmosphere where everything can be done by living in the same area, which is unique for Calgary. So this is one of the better suburbs, I think. And I think the Green Line is also coming to this area, which will also enhance living in Mackenzie Town. And the, the last area is called Elgin. This is like the kind of like the estates area. So everything kind of around this pond is uh, quite pricey. Um, so the average price in the, so if I skip back here, so the, the, uh, the Prestwick area, the homes are kind of like 400 to 600,000 for like a detached home. Condos are, they're usually around like the 300,000 range. Uh, I've seen some in here as low as like 150,000. But the average price will be around will be around three hundred thousand. Um, the Elgin area, you'll see homes, you know, seven hundred to to up into the millions um, for some of the luxury homes, and then scattered throughout here, you'll see the more typical homes. So I'll pull up the stats. Um, where are we here? One second. So Mackenzie Town, bear with me. So the stats for Mackenzie Town, the averages. Detached price, 572000 A bit deceiving because there are pockets that are fairly affordable and there are pockets that aren't. Um, duplexes, 422000 uh, Townhouses, about 370000 And apartments, um, just shy of 300000 And so uh, there are lots of uh, really good schools in Mackenzie Town as well. 
And uh, what else should I mention here? A good access to the Deerfoot. And this is one of the rare spots in Calgary that has a very busy, busy traffic circle. And the one thing I don't like about this area is getting out of here onto the Deerfoot during rush hour. It can be a bit of a disaster. Um, so usually I'm coming, I live in the inner city, so for me I'm always going against traffic. But if you're coming from Mackenzie Town to downtown during rush hour, it can be a bit of a nightmare getting out of this traffic circle area. Other than that, it's one of the better areas of the southeast. I would put a star beside this one for sure. Moving west of Mackenzie Town, we come to the area of Mackenzie Lake, one of my favorite neighborhoods. Um, so I'll pull it up on the map here. So here's Mackenzie Town. Here is Mackenzie Lake right over here, this big section. Uh, another one of those areas that is uh, has some different micro regions. And so we'll start up in the north part first. Um, the north part, it can be it can be split into two as well. So lots of different micro pockets here. So this part of the north section is the more affordable detached homes. Again, this neighborhood is actually primarily detached homes. There's the odd townhouse um, here and there, but primarily it's all detached homes. And so homes in this section are kind of like 350s to 500s. So kind of like an entry level detached uh, market in this section. And because you've got the Bow River Valley here, and this is a ridge, it's hard to see from the actual Google map, yeah, so you can kind of see the on the satellite image, the, how, the lots are a bit smaller, the houses are closer together on this side of Mackenzie Drive, but on this side you can see there are bigger lots and a lot of these are backing onto this ridge. You can't really see it from the satellite view, but there is a, a pretty sizable ridge here and the homes that are backing onto it have excellent views of the Boar River Valley and you can get into the millions of dollars for some of these properties on the ridge and in this little estates area. So that's that's the uh, the north part. Let's go down to the south part now. So obviously we have the lake over here, and this is the estates area of Mackenzie Lake. This island that you see right here, you can get homes in here that are like two to three million dollars, I believe. It's a gated community, and I'll zoom a bit further if I can. You can just see the lot the lot sizes are quite large. Um, pretty fancy homes in here. Lots of these are over a million dollars. And then this section over here, not as expensive as this section, but more expensive than the north section. So it's lots of different micro pockets. Um, stuff in this section might be like 700s, 800s. And then this section, I'm quite familiar with it. My, actually, my grandparents actually lived in this area. And you'll see some, just the standard type properties in here that are between like 500s to 600s or so. And you've got some excellent schools in the Mackenzie Lake area. And again, I should mention, um, wait for the screen to load here. This lake is actually private. I couldn't find a good spot to get a vantage point of the lake, but it is there and it is quite fancy and it's private. So only, only the people of this neighborhood can actually use the lake. Um, so it's not for the public. Um, other than that, uh, there's not too much to talk about that we haven't covered already. It's got excellent access to uh, some golf over here, and you can connect to the ring road uh, right here. So good access roads to the ring road and to Deerfoot Trail over here. So I put a star beside this one as well. It is a bit older now, more mature, but it's one of the more desirable parts of Southeast Calgary. Just north of Mackenzie Lake, we have the area of Douglasdale. Now, on the map here, they have a Douglas Glen and Douglas Dale, but it's actually all one neighborhood called Douglas Dale. And there's even one here called Quarry Park, which should be its own unique area, but it's not. And I'll show you on the map, uh, give you a better sense of what's happening here. So we have Douglas Dale, so just north of 130th Avenue. Okay, this is Mackenzie Lake, which we covered. So we have Douglas Dale is this section right here. Douglas Glen, which used to be its own neighborhood, I think it was like five, six years ago or so, Douglas Glen, and we have Quarry Park, a newer area right here. These are all actually just considered Douglasdale now, but I'll try to break this down for you to make sense out of it. So a similar idea to Mackenzie Lake in that we have the estates area of Douglasdale um, on the ridge here. So this pocket right here that you see is all of the estates part of, of Douglasdale. 
And um, you'll see prices in here, you know, up to a million dollars, even past that for homes on the ridge. For the homes in this section that are not on the ridge, like in the typical areas, I'd say they're between like 550 to 750 would be the bulk for the homes in this section. And if we go up to uh, Douglas Glen, which is this section over here, it's a bit more affordable, the Glen area versus the standard Douglasdale area. And you'll see homes in here that are like 500s to 600s on average. And for townhouses and condos, there are none in Douglasdale. This is all single family homes in this section. And uh, there are some townhouses in um, Douglas Glen though that are like 350 to 500, I would say. So one of the good things about Douglasdale is it has easy access to uh, a bunch of freeways. So you've got Doug, you've got sorry, you've got Deerfoot Trail right here, the number two that takes you north and south at 110 kilometers an hour. You've also got 24th Street, this road right here. This will take you into Quarry Park into River Bend. You can also connect to Glenmore Trail, which again is a busy east-west road. So we've got easy access, point, easy access points in and out of Douglasdale. You've got lots of good schools in the area. You've got easy access to the Bow River and all the parks. Um, so it is a very desirable area. And the last kind of micro region of Douglasdale is actually called Quarry Park. It should be its own um, neighborhood, to be honest. It's very different than Douglasdale. And so Douglasdale was kind of built like the mid 80s to the 90s or around there. But Quarry Park is brand new. This part used to be like a gravel pit. There was nothing here. It was all industrial. Again, this whole area over here is all industrial. And that's exactly what Quarry Park was. What I believe happened is that Imperial Oil decided to move their headquarters here. And they're like a humongous company. And as a result, all these um, office complexes sprouted up in this region, and there's all sorts of mixed-use projects, and uh, there's a shopping center over here now, and it's one of the most unique parts of Calgary. You'll see like a detached house or a condo across the street from like a multi-billion dollar company. You don't really see that in Calgary. It's a very like master plan type community, and like industrial has its place over here, and uh, manufacturing like warehouses are over here you don't really see them mixed up all that much but in quarry park you do and it actually is is pretty cool people just they work all day and they just walk across the street into their homes so it's a very unique part of calgary and it's pricey as well you'll see condos here um 400 to let's say 600 although you, you can find the odd one up to like a million dollars in this area for townhouses i'd say again it ranges between 400 to 650 and detached homes on average, the bulk of the activity is between 800 to 1 million. But there are some luxury spots in here that are more expensive. So it's a pretty cool area. Again, similar to Douglasdale, you got easy access to the Deerfoot, uh, Glenmore over here. And that about sums up the Quarry Park area. All right, we're almost finished. We've got two neighborhoods to go. And the next one is called River Bend, this section right over here. So on the Google Maps, south of McLeod, or south of Glenmore Trail and then west of 24th Street to the river, this area is called River Bend, an area that I used to live in, so I'm quite familiar with it. And uh, I'll show you the satellite view. So the defining kind of feature of this area is all is primarily single family detached homes with good proximity to the river all the different paths and parks and all the water activities you can do along the river. There's even some lagoons in here, which are pretty, pretty cool to check out. Um, the area, it's got a pretty good price point. It's not super high end. It's not low end. Um, just, I would say it's very average and I'll pull up the stats here. So again, no semi detached homes, no apartments. The average price about 582. I'd say the bulk of the activity is like 500 to like 700 ish. And there's the odd townhouse, not many. Um, they have the average prices at 431,000, but mainly it's single family detached homes. And other than that, not a huge amount to talk about, uh, other than it's got good access to the river. It also has good access to both Glenmore, Deerfoot, and this Deerfoot Meadows, when the screen loans, this big yellow section over here is a massive strip mall. And you've got excellent access to that as well. And to get from Riverbend to downtown, it, it's not that far at all. It's like 10, 10, 15 minutes. So it's not deep south, but it's not inner city. It's kind of in between. 
Other than that, not a huge amount to talk about in terms of Riverbend. And last on our list is the neighborhood of Ogden, which you can see right over here. And I'll show you the Google map. So everything north of Glenmore Trail to like the CPR rail line, this section is all Ogden. It also goes by Linwood sometimes. And this area, if I'll pull up the cred map again, is kind of the odd one out. I'd say Ogden is more closely aligned with the areas in green than it is with the areas in yellow. But um, it is classified as Southeast Calgary, so I will go over it. And this area, it can get um, it can get a bit of a bad rap as being not that desirable. This whole green area can have that bad rap, but I'd say Ogden is actually it's not too bad in spots. And then there are some spots that are maybe a bit uh, sketchy as well, if I'm being honest. And uh, so it has a good price point though, um, one of the more affordable parts of Calgary. So for a detached home, the average price is four seventy one. Um, last I checked, um, Calgary the the overall citywide de detached home price is like 600000 or so. So we're definitely well below the average. Um, there are some duplexes here, about three forty one, And there's a few townhouses, um, 286000 So fairly low pricing in this part of town, a very blue collar type of area. And I will show you here, I'll get the satellite view again. So Ogden is this section right here. And there are nice parts of it. Uh, if I zoom in here, some of these homes that are on this ridge right here overlooking the river, they also have river views, but they also have excellent views of downtown from here as well. And so this part could be not so bad, but there are, other, there are some spots in here that look a bit, uh, a bit sketchy, but overall, the area is not that bad. It gets a bad reputation, but it's really not that bad. And, um, it's really old. Like this is one of the oldest parts of Calgary. I think this was settled like 100 years ago, this neighborhood. It was like a rail stop. So it's a very old neighborhood, especially compared to all the stuff that we looked at earlier that was all built in like 90s and up. This area, there's some really old pockets of it. So it is a bit of the odd one out of all the areas that we've covered. And that's just a quick rundown of the Ogden area. Well, that's my breakdown of Southeast Calgary. Thank you so much for watching. And again, this is a multi-part video series. And so stay tuned for future episodes on other areas of Calgary. And if you're out there watching this and you're already in Calgary, you're thinking of either buying or selling, or perhaps you're relocating to this city, I want to help you out. So feel free to reach out to me. There are many links in my description below. You can, you can either schedule a call with me, you can search for homes, you can get a home valuation request. I'd love to help out. Again, call, text, email, or comment. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.